who starts painting up the Vermilion Sentinel. Got some of the basic stuff of the base done. I'm gonna go over the rest of it throughout this one. And for now, we are going to start with the skin. And for that, corn red. So I will get the skin, I'll get the base coat for the skin done. And we'll be back after that. All right, and here we are with the base coat for the skin done. Nice and simple. Now, we are going to work on the chitinous armor bits, mostly the ones on the head. And there are a couple more scattered throughout. For that, we're going to be using, using Vallejo Heavy Violet. Um, any sort of dark purple will work. This is what I have on hand. So I will be back once this step is done. Okay, and here we are with all of the purple chitinous bits painted in. Um, I did go back and fill in a couple of extra spots with corn red, just because I missed them. I was still trying to decide which parts I wanted to be purple and which one's red. So I got that touched up. You also notice I left that big spot on the front of his forehead there. Don't know if it'll come up very well, but that one's actually a completely separate piece, which we'll be doing later on. For right now though, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the metallics. And for that, we have our trusty lead belcher. So this will be, ba this will be basically going over all of the metallic areas. We'll be adding in a, some highlight colors later. But one thing I've noticed, um, I used Army Painter White and a lot of the lighter metallic colors have a really hard time sticking to the white. So I'm gonna do a base coat of Lead Belcher for all of the metallics and then go back with a second metallic and add that on. So we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, and here we are with all of the metallics base coated. So what we're gonna do next is we are gonna go straight to washes. After that, we have two of them. We're gonna be doing the all of the metallics with Mulm Oil Gloss. And everything else is going to get Agrax Earthshade. Now when I say everything else, there is something you want you to keep in mind here. If you notice, I haven't done uh, the teeth or any of the claws and the hands of the feet. We're gonna be going back to those a bit later. So all of the red and purple areas are gonna get the Agrax Earthshade and all of the metallic ones will have Nuln Oil Gloss. All right, and we'll come back once that step is done and the washes are dried and we can move on. All right, so we've given our wash plenty of time to dry and now we are going to work on the secondary metallics. For that, we use, focus, Retributor Armor. Um, this is gonna be basically just a way, just used in places to break up a lot of the monotony that you see with the silver, so it's going to be on places like the trim of the pauldrons and the trim of the foot armor right there and a couple of other pieces. I'm also going to do a good bit on the rifle. Again, just so it's not massive chunks of silver all over the place. So I'll be right back when that's done. We can go on to the next step. All right, and there we go. We add, with just a few spots of Retributor armor, the model looks a whole lot, a whole lot better, a whole lot more, I don't wanna say realistic because it's an alien creature, but the monotonous spaces of just silver are broken up a lot more. The model looks a lot more dynamic. So for now, we are going to move on with the, with the goal here and give everything a quick wash, wa quick wash of Reichlin Flesh Shade Gloss. I need to get a bit more soon. So, be back after that gets applied and has a chance to dry. 
Okay, so we have the gold washed, and you can see particularly on the rifle that it did sort of make things pop a bit. I also got the gold plate in the front of his head. So for now, we are going to go ahead and move on to highlighting. We're going to start out with the red. We are going to go back to corn red. We are going to build up and we are going to build the red back up to where it was before while leaving the darker color in the recesses. So we'll be back when that step is done. All right, and here we are with the skin highlighted. Um, it's not very, not very prevalent on the front just because there's not a whole lot of skin there to show, but you can definitely see the effect on the back. I mean, the raised area, the raised areas stand out quite a bit more, and you still see a lot. You can still see the shade in the recesses there. So we are now going to go move on to the purple. And for that, I'm going to go with Zerius purple. I think that's how it's pronounced. And again, we're, we're going to build this up and leave, make sure we leave the recess the darkened uh, aggress earth shade still in the recesses and pick out the more prominent points so we will be back shortly once that step is done all right and here we go um you can see the purple on the head there is a bit more pronounced i hope that's showing up in the camera and a lot of the higher points on the purple armor is a bit more prevalent. So now we are going to put on our last highlight for the skin. And for that, we're actually going to use Kislev Flesh. And this is going to be Primarily an edge highlight on the sharpest areas to make those stand out a bit. Now for this, you're also going to want to use a small, small brush so it won't, so it won't look so stark. All right, well, there we go. We'll be back in a few minutes once this step is done. All right, and here we go. Again, it's pretty subtle. I may, I may go back and blend that a bit more, but yeah there we go now to finish up the highlighting for the purple we're gonna do basically the same thing on all the purple the purple kindness armor with warlord purple we'll be back once those steps are done and we can move on okay and there we go the purple is now fully highlighted you can see it was mostly just mostly an edge highlight, focusing on the very tops for this last one. And we are starting to definitely see everything come together. So for now, we are going to move on to the silver metallics. So for that, we are going to put down a layer of iron breaker. Have all of the silver, we're going to brighten that up, and then move on to brightening up the gold. We'll be back in just a bit. All right, so here we are with the silver brought back up. You can see it brightened things up quite nicely. Now, we are gonna go ahead and move on to the gold. I'm gonna brighten that up a bit too. For that, we are gonna use Auric Armor Gold. I'll make that nice and bright. Uh, make sure to leave the wash in the recess. And we'll be back after that. And there we go. <clears throat> Brightened up the gold a bit. It might not show very might not show very well on the screen, but it definitely has an impact when you take a look at it. Unfortunately, a lot of the shine from the gloss wash we used is definitely there you can kind of see it a little bit on the top of the rifle there and now we are quickly moving into the home stretch to get this guy done 
So, in any case, we're gonna go ahead and work on, get the claws knocked out and that'll be done nice and quick. So for that, what we're gonna do is show you everything here really quick. And actually, we can get a couple of steps done here right now. So first off, what we're going to do is apply a base coat of Xandri dust to all the claws and the teeth. We're then going to save ourselves a bit of time with some Agrax Earthshade. We're gonna wash the claw, you know, all of the teeth and claws, and we're gonna get the base done too. After all that's a chance to dry, highlight all of that with the Shabti bone. We're not gonna highlight the base, but we are gonna do all of the all of the teeth and claw bits on the model. So we'll take a look at that once the base coat of Xandri dust is down. Okay, and here we are. You can see the claws on the hands and the feet and the teeth are done. So now, as stated before, now we switch over to the last wash, Agrex, Agrex Earthshade. With this, we're gonna hit the claws and the base. So we'll be back once that is done. All right, and here we go with the washes finally applied. So now we're just gonna go ahead and finish those up with a Shabti bone. Just a real quick highlight there, and then we can put the finishing touches on this guy. So we'll be back once the teeth and claws are highlighted. All right, and there we go. The highlight to the teeth and claws are there. It's not a whole lot, but it definitely does make a difference. So now we are in the home stretch. And so to make things a bit simple, we're gonna move on to the last bit, last couple of bits. And for that, it's going to be adding a little bit of a glow. And for this, we're doing two very simple colors that anyone that really anyone can do. We're gonna start out by adding a bit of white. And then giving, then applying the green glow with Hex Wraith Flame. And so with these guys, they don't have a whole lot of glowing bits on them. Honestly, I'm just going to be doing one part of the rifle, and then we'll be good, and then we can finish up the base, and we'll be all set. So we'll be right back once I once I have the white base coat put down. All right, and there we are. Um, so for the Vermilion Sentinel here, we're just gonna do a glowing bit on the back of the rifle. Uh, if you have, if you're also doing the, the other bit, the other, for the other Sentinel, to be able to get to the back end of that rifle a bit easier. So you'll have two sides to do, whereas with this particular one, it's just the one. So now that we have this done and it's dried, um, this one took me about two coats to get to that white. We are going to Apply a small amount of hex wraith flame, then get the then get the base with a quick dry brush, and we'll be all set. And here we are. Both of the Vermilion Sentinels from the Amber Clay Posse Box are now fully painted and ready to hit the table. Definitely like the addition of the shields there works out very well for these guys. Um, I'll probably end up picking up a couple more a couple more um, STLs for these just because I don't want to use the same model over and over again. You can really all just kind of rescale it and attach it in different different angles to a certain point before it becomes a bit repetitive. But other than that, yeah, this turned out really well. So hopefully this will help you guys get your stuff on the table painted up and ready to go a little bit quicker. So stay tuned, we got plenty more content coming up this holiday season. All right, take care everyone. When I can find my paint, I just had, there we go. Hooray for editing. Where'd it go, where'd it go, where'd it go? I literally just had the damn thing here a minute ago. Here it is. Hooray for editing.